Hello, it's Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com, thechrisvossshow.com. We have a phone comparison we're going to do here today with two different phones, one from T-Mobile, uh, t-mobile.com, it's t-mobile.com. This is the HTC One S uh, that you can take and get from T-Mobile. Uh, over here we have the Verizon, uh, it's the iPhone 4S, it's a 16 gigabyte version that comes in three different versions of course, one that you can get for 32 and 64 gig. Um, so we'll be comparing these two side by side, we'll be doing some benchmarks and camera comparisons, so stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe to the Chris Voss Show, we do tons of phones, reviews and comparisons and all sorts of phone accessory toys and you can be able to see them on the ChrisVossShow.com and on our YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to uh, tune in to the, all those so you can see all the fun stuff we are always doing. Now you can see here, the um, we're about a week away from the launch of what will probably be the iPhone 5. So we're kind of comparing almost a year old phone at this point. You can see they have different ways of pulling themselves out of standby. One is the ring on the One uh, S uh, to pull the ring or to drag an icon into the ring to pull it out of standby. The other is a slide feature with the iPhone 4S. Uh, let's talk about some of the dimensions and aspects of them. You're looking at, <clears throat> with the HTC One S, uh, dimensions are 130.9 uh, by 65 by 7.8 millimeters. Its weight is 119.5 gig uh, grams. It's a 4.3 Super AMOLED capacitive touchscreen. It's got a 540 by 960 screen. It's got HTC Sense 4.0. We have Android 4.03 running on this version. It's got 1 gigabyte of RAM, 16 gigabytes built in storage, a dual core processor, 1.5 gigahertz Snapdragon, a uh, 8 megapixel rear camera, a 1.3 megapixel front camera, and it does come with Beats Audio, which I really like. It brings out the um, sound quality of stuff really well with the Beats Audio. Now, with the iPhone 4S, what we're looking at is uh, its given weight is a 4.9 ounces or 139 grams. It's uh, 114 by 59 by 9.4 millimeters. Talk time of 8 hours, standby 200 hours. It has an LCD color TFT screen. Its resolution is 640 by 960 pixels. 3.5 inches diagonal with uh, 16.7 million colors, 24 bit. Of course, it has the retina display that you've always heard about. Uh, it comes with an Apple A5 dual core processor, 800 megahertz. Uh, and like I said, you can get it in three different variances of uh, raw storage that you can get inside of it 16, 32, and 64. Now, let's take a look at a few other features that are in here that we can take a look at. It has on the back an 8 megapixel camera, and it also on the front facing camera has a VGA camera. It will capture 1080p HD. Uh, with its video. So that gives you a rundown of how it works and everything else, what goes into it. Uh, with the Apple phone you have AirPlay. With the T-Mobile One S phone you can buy a plug-in adapter to be able to plug in the phone to your HD TV so it does have HDMI output which is very cool. Um, so let's compare more of these phones. As You can see the screen size is much taller on the uh, HTC One S. On the HTC One S we have a uh, speaker for making calls. We also have a front facing camera here. We have your back button, a home button, and most recent apps button. And it works on, of course, as we mentioned, the Android system. Um, for the iPhone 4S, we have a front facing camera right here. We have a speaker that's built in here. Uh, we pretty much just have a home button, which is uh, basically what you use for most of your commands and stuff uh, if you're not swiping on the uh, iPhone system. Okay. Across the top here you can see we have the power button, we have the inlet to pull off the back, we also have a small microphone hole and an earphone plug. On the 4S we have a power button, we have a small microphone hole and a earphone hole. Okay, so looking at both devices you can see they're fairly comparable in their thickness. We have a microphone hole here for the uh, bottom of the 1S. We have speakers here on the iPhone 4S, and we also have a charger port to take and plug in and charge and sync the device. Along the right side of both phones, we have a volume rocker on the 1S, 
And then on the uh, 4S, we have pretty much nothing but uh, a SIM card entry and input port. Down the left-hand side, you can see on the uh, 1S, you can see we have a charging port right here. And then on the uh, iPhone 4S, we have a mute switch and a rocker, uh, well, they're not rocker buttons, I should say. They're a plus and minus button that you can take and click on to increase your volume separately. So let's take a look at how both these phones take and operate. You've seen how they go through their systems. Now, the uh, Android system on the 1S has a much more customization you can do with the screens. You can do different widgets and everything else that you can take and put in here. You can adjust the screens, all that good stuff. Not as much customization you can do with the iPhone 4S. The iPhone 4S is very simple. It's got a back and forth, left to right, uh, finite scroll to it. That's, there's no up and down or anything of that nature. Um, with the uh, Android, of course, 1S, you have a whole lot more you can do. You can see here it does have a left to right, back and forth, a non-finite scroll also. And then, of course, you have your area that you go into uh, with apps where you have much of the same thing. Uh, they each have their own different versions of app stores, if you will. There's the Play Store on the uh, Android, and there's the uh, iPhone store that is on the um, iPhone 4S. So you can see kind of the little bit difference in how they present their stuff. There's, uh, of course, all sorts of stuff you can get uh, with iTunes also to mix in music that you can get all with the music, all with the Google Play. So uh, comparatively, they, uh, um, the Apple iPhone 4S, the Apple system has more apps but the Android systems are slowly catching up and more and more uh, apps are being made by Android first as opposed to iPhone first. So they're both very good quality in their build and uh, operating systems uh, in my mind. I love both phones and OSs. Um, so let's take a look at the notifications menu. They both have drop-down notifications menu. You can see the notifications menu on the, um, on the 1S. And you can see some of the notifications. Of course, I've got a few different notifications going on with my uh, with my uh, iPhone 4S. Um, but they can all be customized and similar. You can, of course, make different screens. You can see here there's different widgets you can make on the Android that you cannot do with the iPhone 4S. So some people really like this customization feature where you can make different uh, you can customize different things to be able to do. Uh, one nice thing about the Android is, is that, like you see here, you can make quick launches to turn on and off your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, all those sort of coordinates, um, where you really can't do that with the iPhone 4S, at least not in the OS 5 system that this is running on. And keep that in mind. This is running on this the OS 5 in the 4.03 on the Android ice cream sandwich. Okay, so here we can see the uh, speed test results that we've done on both phones. We're not really comparing services here, but keep in mind the iPhone uh, 4S only works on a 3G network, so its speeds are going to be, of course, much lower than the T-Mobile 4G network that the uh, 1S is going to be able to run on. So you can kind of see how these compare and what the real differences are in the speed test. Okay, so now we have the front-facing camera experience that you can see here. This is uh, this is through the AT&T uh, network for, for uh, the 4G that you'll see this over. Um, so you can kind of see the results we have here are very good. Okay, so now here you can see our experience over a localized Wi-Fi. And, uh, of course, results may vary. We've got some sound cycling that we're experiencing. So you can see how that plays out on the Samsung Galaxy S3. We've been doing a number of recordings, so there's probably a little bit backed up in the two of them. But you can see I'm coming out really well on this end. We're just having a little problems with the seeding end, which may be coming from the uh, iPad 3. So you can see it looks really well on what's being sent on this end. All right, so what we're looking at here, this is a video call that we're taking and doing to, to test out the front-facing camera. So you can see what, how well I'm coming out. Now, this is being done on the AT&T 3G network. Uh, and not on a local Wi-Fi, so you can see the results that we're getting from that as this feeds in, and you can see they come through fairly well on the uh, AT&T network. We'll switch over to Wi-Fi here. Okay, so now here's an example of where we're using this uh, on the 
um, localized Wi-Fi. So we're getting a much, a little bit better picture for uh, for what it's worth. But this is a localized Wi-Fi picture. Where we're running on the Wi-Fi between both the um, between the iPad 3 and also the iPhone 4S. So you can see how that comes out. Okay, so using Geekbench 2, you can get both these apps on the uh, on both devices. Uh, you can see the uh, app uh, for the 1S scored 1500 and 6300 for the iPhone. Now, of course, there's some real differences here in the processor, so it's expected that they would uh, the 1S would outperform it. Uh, you can see the processor is an 800 megahertz processor on the Apple, and then on the uh, on the 1S, it's a 1.5 gigahertz processor. Let's take a look at the integer performance. You can see here, you can kind of compare the two and see the differences. Let's page down here some more. You can see more of these numbers and differences they come through. And of course, you can see floating point performance here. There we go. And some more numbers there that you can take and compare. In the end, memory performance. And actually, it looks like we've got stream performance here. So there's the numbers there. You can see the breakdown. Okay, so now let's take a look at how both phones performed. We had the iPhone 4S came in at 1989 in overall system and uh, uh, beaten, of course, by the 1S. You can see here, we'll go through the tests as they came out. The CPU test, you can see with the breakdown here on the CPU and uh, some of the math, processing, the speed, all that sort of good stuff that went into it. Now this is a 16 uh, gigabyte uh, memory that we have in this phone. Uh, you could of course get a 32 and 64. Let's go ahead and page down some more. You can see here more of the performance with the disk test. It's interesting to see the uh, iPhone is outperforming in many of these different places. Uh, here we have the memory. Here we have the 2D graphics test. And of course, here we have the 3D graphics test. Now keep in mind, you have the Retin display with the iPhone 4S. Okay, so now let's take a look at the camera functions. We pretty much covered most of the phone. Uh, on the camera functions, you've got the ability, of course, to adjust your uh, uh, flash and your backlight or your light for when you're using camcorder. Uh, you, of course, have your settings gear here. Uh, and you can go through and adjust all this uh, different elements that you have to control the front, the, the back, all that good stuff. Uh, you can also adjust your image resolution. This is pretty standard on most um, Android phones, so we'll skip through this. You can adjust your video quality, uh, duration, image adjustments, ISO, white balance, continuous shooting. This is one great thing about the HT phones. They have a continuous shooting series where you can shoot uh, up to 20 frames. Choose the best one you want, or you can hold the button to do continuous shooting, which works pretty well and jams out a whole mess of photos. Uh, you can capture a lot more action shots that way. You've got auto upload, camera interface. <clears throat> You, we can do some adjustments here. Uh, video options, you can also uh, add video stabilization, record with audio, stereo recording, all that good stuff. So it gives you a lot of different options you can take and do. Face detection, widescreen, geotag, uh, all the great things that you can normally do with Android customization. Down here you've got several different shooting types of scenes you can choose from. Auto, slow motion video, HDR, panorama, portrait, group portrait, all this stuff, all the way down to low light, which is really useful if you're shooting in low light and you want to be able to adjust the camera. So you can really offset uh, a lot of different viewing problems you might be having to, and still take great pictures. Uh, <clears throat> touching this little opaque circle here, you get some effects and you can see these effects in real time uh, on the screen as you're taking the photo. So that makes it very easy to decide what you want to take and do with the effects. You can see here there's quite a few of them. Uh, vintage cold, sepia, some negatives, some posterized, some aqua where things can get really weird. So you have those options to be able to shoot those with the camera. Now you can see here you've got a shutter button for taking photos. You've got your camcorder button for taking video. You also have your zoom button where you can slide in and out here and be able to take your photos. <clears throat> now let's look at some photos. Okay, the one thing about the HTC is it does take really nice photos. So you can see here we've got really good colors, great reds. Now, the one thing about the HTC phones as of late is they're definitely manipulating the yellow, blues, and greens, and they've been bumping it up. <clears throat> you can see here some video uh, that we're taking 
Uh, on this video, the floor is much darker, and we've kind of noticed that what it does is uh, HEC has manipulated the yellow, blues, and greens and jacked them up a little bit. It's not necessarily a bad thing. What it does is it gives you the impression that your photos are a lot more brighter than they really are, but uh, the, the challenge with that, especially in video, is if you get into a large green, yellow, or uh, blue environment, it tends to really dominate. But you can offset that. That's the beauty of the Android product. You can offset a lot of those controls. We don't have a big problem with it, but we definitely notice it with the HTC products. So I don't see it as a detriment. You just have to be aware of it and offset your ISO and your exposure settings and stuff uh, to get more of the true color. Here's a picture, of course, of our floor. And I can tell you it's a little bit much darker, well, not more than a little bit, but it is much darker than this. Uh, so once again, it's pumping up the yellows. You can see the greens coming through very strongly in the photo. Um, so it's not a bad thing. It works very well. I mean, when you're out doing pictures and videos, it looks beautiful uh, and pops everything really nicely. It's just you have to be careful if you get environments with too much of one color. And of course, you can uh, customize that and adjust it. Here's some low light video. Took us a second to get in focus, but some low light video, and as you can see here, uh, the uh, the flash, the light works extremely well in being able to light up your environment and be able to see what's going on. The focus comes through, the colors come through. It does a great job uh, with being able to light up an area in the dark. <clears throat> Here's a uh, low light photo that we took. Comes out really great. The colors are still crisp lines we can see everything perfectly in a dark situation so the flash does a great job in the camcorder light of lighting up an area and being able to see what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish so okay so let's take a look at the camera on the iPhone 4s now the one thing aspect about it is it's not as customizable as the uh, Android system. You don't have as many features, bells and whistles as you saw earlier that you can take and do. Options wise, you can choose between a grid and HDR shooting. Uh, you can also choose between auto on and off for your uh, flash and your lamp. You can choose between a front facing camera and a back facing camera. Very simple here. Of course, you've got to switch to, switch to uh, both uh, video and taking and doing. Um, a uh, photograph. You've got your photograph button here to take and make that happen. And that's pretty much it. There's an edit button I'll show you here in a second once you go into photo mode. But it doesn't have like the ISO and exposure and all those sort of different things that it comes with on the Android. Now here's a picture of my floor. You can see it here. It comes out very well on the, on the Apple iPhone. It is a little bit brighter in its photo than what my actual floor looks like, but it comes out in spectacular detail. It looks really good. Uh, here's a low light situation where we're taking a picture with the uh, low lamp. Uh, we're taking a, a flash photo, if you will. And you can see here the colors pop pretty well, and they come out uh, they come out pretty fine from what we can see. Uh, never had too much problem with low light situations. It handles it very well. Here's a video of a low light situation that we're in. It takes fairly good pictures in low light. Um, you can see here some of the results we're getting in a dark situation where we're using the lamp to take and light everything up. So you can see a video of a low lamp situation here. Here's another. Now let's take a look at the camera. You can see here the uh, video camera for the iPhone 4S. Uh, it takes the uh, pictures a little bit brighter than the uh, normal color of my floor that you can see here, but you can get a good idea of it. Okay, so you get a good idea of the camera, how it works. Now when you do have a photo and you want to make it look better, you can go into edit mode on here and you can take and uh, enhance it with some color. You can also eliminate red eye. You can uh, crop it if you so choose. And you can also rotate the photo if you uh, didn't shoot it in the right format of landscape or portrait. So you have those abilities to do that. You also have the ability to take and send it to Apple TV if you want to take and preview your photos on your Apple TV, which is one element you can't do with Android. But there is definitely a lot less customization for the photography element of the iPhone. Besides that, it does take really good photographs. Uh, in fact, probably the best I've seen out of all the Android series uh, the iPhone 4S, for me, takes the best photographs. 
All right, so overall on both phones, I like both phones. I'm a big favorite of, of course, the iPhone 4S. One of it is the apps and, of course, is the camera. I love the camera, and that's why I buy a smartphone, is to be able to have access to those items. The camera is a very important thing for me. You can decide which one is best for you and uh, which OS operating system is best for you by the, some of the details and benchmarks we've given you. Have fun. Be sure to check back into the ChrisVossShow.com often. Be sure to see our friends at T-Mobile. Thanks, T-Mobile, for providing the phones for us. Um, see T-Mobile at t mobile Dot com. That's t-mobile.com. And, of course, we have our Verizon phone here. Uh, and uh, we'll see you when the new phones come out here in the next little while. So be sure to check both of them out and subscribe to our YouTube channel.